America, home of the free, population of 300 million and the largest food producing country in the world. Within the past few years, an issue has arisen that affects every American and soon every person on the earth. This issue is the genetic modification of food producing plants. In an effort to combat a growing population and a decreasing availability of farmland, farmers are turning to genetically modified crops to increase their productivity. Using the technology of today, scientists are able to select a certain gene of interest and get that gene to express itself in plants. There are several benefits to genetically modified plants. In one case, they've found a cold resistance gene, which allows plants to survive an earlier frost, allowing for a longer growing season. Yet, it's nearly impossible to read a newspaper without seeing something regarding transgenic crops. And with so many viewpoints out there, even amongst the scientists themselves, who's the public to trust? What are they to believe? It's the attempt of this documentary film to examine the public perception of this technology in comparison to the scientists' perspectives. We hope to help alleviate social fear and concern for the technology and bring about an awareness for the potential benefits that may ensue from the genetic modification of plants. This is Jill Orler in front of Michigan State Capitol. Um, we're here filming some public perceptions of genetically modified crops, and we chose today's Capitol's beautiful setting to get just the common man's perspective on what genetically modified crops and how they affect the food industry. Um, hi, I'm Jill Orler, and I'm here at the State Capitol, and this is um, Dan Gustafson. He's going to tell us a little bit about what he knows about genetically modified foods and crops. So, um, what I know? Yeah, what you know? Well, I know the, uh, there's a lot of research underway to try and increase productivity and, uh, and crop yields, and that there are uh, a number of organizations and individuals out there who are afraid of this, who frankly uh, are not. I have no qualms about either purchasing, eating, or feeding my family uh, genetically modified crops. Wonderful. We're here um, with some folks that have just left the capital, and they would like to give us their views on genetically modified crops, genetically modified foods. So, if um, Joan, if you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit about what you know okay. about. I know a little about it by reading about the uh, Taco Bell controversy about genetically favored, like genetically grown um, corn, I think it is. I grew up on a farm and I, uh, my feeling is the natural is still the best and uh, the old fashioned way. That's, that's my feeling on it. Hi! Again, we're outside um, right across the street from the Capitol and this is Bob Grobener and he's going to tell us what he knows about genetically modified crops and what he's heard in the media and his perspectives on it. Well, I've watched a lot of it on television, of course, read it in newspapers and magazines. I think they're playing with dynamite. They start issuing this stuff before it's been proven to be safe for human consumption. I think the latest one with the taco shells, uh, genetically altered corn is a good example of what's happening when you know, it's passed off on us and we don't have any idea what's, what we're eating. Law School with Sheila and she's going to give us um, her perspective on genetically modified crops. Sheila, um, have you heard anything about genetically modified crops and so what are your feelings? I heard about the uh, taco shells, the problem with that, and if it has not been tested and there really is something there then I think yeah, they should clone them and maybe they should do a little more research, but I, if I'm not mistaken, genetically altered foods have been around for many years. And you see this watermelon. So I think we've all been eating them, and I don't know that we can say we can pull them off the market totally. However, if they have uh, become lax in their testing, uh, yeah, maybe the industry needs to be. So now we want to ask you, Dave. Jesse Stanton and I am with the Michigan Resistance Against Genetic Engineering or Mirage and that stands for like 
because what the biotech industry has told us about um, about GE Foods feeding the world and being wonderful and great for everyone is just a mirage. There are